Okay. Excellent. Well then, uh, we go now live to our callers because we have Molly Lewis and Ben Swallow yeah. on the line. Hello. <laughs> Yay! Hello. We miss you so much. Oh wait, we oh. can't hear you. We don't have their Hold audio. On. One Hold sec. On. Hold please. We have no audio. Yeah. Our, we have no snare in our headphones. It's us, I promise. There we Yay! go. Yay! Hey. Hey. Now we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, good. You want some ASMR? It's time for ASMR. Oh, it's man. ASMR, ASMR call in the morning. ASMR for hope. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it's going really good. How about how about the two of you? Uh, it's it's pretty it's, good. Right now we're good. we're at my grandma's house and we're looking th we're in her media room. My grandma has a media room because she's hipper than you and uh, we're watching my aunt make a pumpkin pie. So two pumpkin er, pies. Two pumpkin pies. So everything's going according to plan. <laughs> Oh. I can kind of hear that in the background. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> but um, the sound of pie being made. Yeah. For, uh, for those of our those of our uh, uh, viewers who may not be familiar with you, even though you've both been uh, longtime Desert Bus uh, guests, uh, could you talk a little bit about yourselves for a minute and say uh, what you're what you do and what you like? Oh, I hate doing that. What we I do mean, and what we like? like. Uh, I think yeah, other. you first. Uh, I am a. Uh, I'm I'm a singer songwriter and ukulelist and podcaster and overall hyphenate, um, and we've been I I know I've been participating in Desert Bus since I think the DB6 right seven I think well maybe I called into DB6 six, but okay. then I I got suckered in I went to the moon <laughs> for DB7 and yeah that's Liz's fault that was yeah I blame Liz yeah. um, and I've been dragging this one with me um, who is also a hyphenate Ben what do you do uh, I never know how to answer that. Um, I know it's hard. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like the hyphenate, but it's more of a it's more like a katamari. It's just a bunch of random garbage. That I, You're I the like king of the cosmos. Yeah. Is what I'm hearing. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, I wish. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, I yeah I uh, have spent way too much time obsessing over clothing, um, and uh, I. Uh, Destiny's another thing I've spent too much time on. And you are responsible for um, the night stops oh, yeah. being visible the this year. JVC That's XI and the, uh, the... and the open source scan converter, yeah. uh, which is the the uh, feed chain that allows uh, the really high quality uh, uh, Sega CD and Desert Bus. So yep. you're welcome, I it's, guess. It's no, actually thank you. It's, sweet. It's I can really actually awesome. see the edge of the road, mm -hmm. which is actually oh. super useful in night when you're night driving. Oh, and it's, I, I don't know if you saw it, but Ian was able to get that first night bus stop ever. You got two? <coughs> yeah, wow. speech. He got two speech. of them. Now, right. Kathleen, you are coming up on one soon here, so keep Oh, I'm not cool. trying for it. Oh, well then. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't but, gotten a but, bus stop yet. I'm not about to start now, Horner. Just give up. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, Cam got one too. That's really great. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow, that's a really oh, good photo. Yeah, so uh, wouldn't it be I, amazing if, like, only at night there's actually somebody at one of those stops? Yeah, and we've just been missing oh, right. it the whole you time. You just never see them, and actually the bus fills up. Can, you yeah. stop at all Can, nights. Cam, the whole, whole, Cam always says much. that one of these days he's gonna pull over at one of these stops and he will get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and he will go mad. Oh, no. yeah. that's some waiting for Godot stuff. He'll right be there. much older. <laughs> He'll yeah. be like, you didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask the Please. VCR that you had. Uh, hooked up before uh have y'all uh office spaced that yet oh. i think we need to ask james for permission to office space that but does it still work it's ready it, it works yeah, yeah. So it... all right well then maybe it doesn't yeah i just figured because it was such a mess to yeah oh see, yeah think i mean yeah. Yeah, I... you know what bust the environment <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's definitely a desire to but there's also the well, maybe don't break it till after the run kind of insurance <laughs> yeah. policy. Just, just uh, in case. <laughs> that's totally fair. Yeah. Uh, it also looks like we have a, uh, a a minor raid going on at the moment. There's a whole lot of people piling in the chat here to uh, to see your call and to join us here at Desert Bus for Hope, uh, oh. which is awesome. Uh, sure. Do do either of you feel up to uh, maybe answering a couple of questions from our blog post here? Uh, no. No, I'm okay, sure. No, no questions? <laughs> cool. I can close that tab. Uh, that's good, right. Uh, as long as I don't have to answer your questions. 
I, I would love to see you try. No, I, 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 I really. So when you sang yeah. to Stephen Fry, Ben, what yeah. was, what did he smell like? Uh, oh, hang on, I. I mean, that's no. kind of a question here. It's old books, isn't it? Was it's it? old books, right? I can't remember. I know, I know, you've told me like multiple times, and I want to say it's like rose water and musk, but I don't. Really yeah, know. he smells like rose water and old books. That's exactly it. There you go. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Mark Rosewater. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> Uh, uh, I got a couple of questions for you here, Molly, specifically about your song Chop Chop. Uh, somebody was wondering, how long did it take you to write that song? Those lyrical puns are deliciously awful. <laughs> Thanks? I'm pretty, I think? I'm pretty sure in the pun world that's intended as a compliment. Yeah. It's it's sort of a, a mixed bag there. Uh, yeah. No, it took me... I don't, I don't know. I want to say... It, it took me probably a couple of days. Like, once I had the chord progression, I sort of knew, like, okay, this is the attitude James Bond is going to have. Mm -hmm. um, and I... it's it, There's sort of, like, this sort of Tom Lehrer trick is if you find a word that ends in sort of a common sound. Like, he rhymes 85 things with ability in one of his songs, and so yeah. I'm tasked with your assassination, but I don't like confrontation. Just kind of just came right out. Um, I did not plan at the beginning of the song, contrary to what it might seem... It wasn't my plan the entire time to end with it's a with a joke about getting behind something, but right. just kind of the song just tied itself into a little bow, and I was like, I guess the song is done now. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, I I don't know, and I think if I said, oh, that song took me two years, I'm not really sure like what to the what would be a surprising answer to that question. It's the uh, it's the it's the old Picasso trick. It's it's like hey, like that only took you ten minutes to do, madam. It took me my entire life. Like, you, yeah, exactly. you, you had to learn to become a songwriter of that caliber before you were able to write that song in the mm -hmm. first place. And you had to be, you had to sink some time into GoldenEye 007 for the Xbox 360, and that's, yeah. you yeah. know, that's time you can write off as well. Yep. All right, excellent. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> I, got a, I, I got a question here for Ben. Uh, this one is, this one is coming in from, uh, from, uh, long-time Loading Ready Run and Desert Bus fan, Foxmar. Uh, hey, Ben, one more? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, when I get home. All right, <laughs> excellent. Uh, another question. You can hop on my grandma's Destiny 2 save. It'll be mine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, another question here, because uh, uh, actually this one's particularly interesting to me because I've caught some of your streams about it, uh, Molly, on uh, Waffle Media. Uh, but how is that bullet journal going? Uh, this is in from Peach, who's got Steph on it recently, and it helped her especially with the preparations for Desert Bus. I, I just saw Heather bounce up and down on the couch. <laughs> Hi, Heather. Um, bullet journal is going pretty pretty well. The latest sort of... I, should I explain what bullet journaling is? Would that help? Yeah, yeah. I, think I think a 30-second yeah, crash uh, course is good. Yeah, it's a... Just to... In brief, it is a basically like an operating system for uh, your planner and so you turn a blank journal or notebook into your personal organizer mm -hmm. uh, and there's sort of a, a, a syntax and sort of a way that you interact with it every time you use it so that you are when you check off the things that you've done but there's also actionable things you can do and stuff you didn't do and so it kind of keeps you mindful of what is actually worth your time and you're constantly kind of reprocessing your tasks and not like you know wishing that your phone would just do all that thinking for you um, and so the latest thing I've started doing is I do scheduling in the front and I start from the back cover and work towards the middle with notes. Uh, oh. and I'm a, a big fan of that because then your notes don't get buried when your month is over or your week. That's actually, um, yeah, that's and, really good. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, I have not, knock on wood, I've not bought any new pens for it recently. I feel like I've plateaued with the amount of pens I need. So I think that bodes well for the stability of my system. Oh, oh, I right. I was yeah. going to say, well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you bought more pen, but like, I understand what you mean. That, like, yeah, yeah. You don't need more different. I don't have more. And, I, I don't have more excuses to buy more pens, which I think. Yeah. Because basically, the thing I like about bullet journaling is you're constantly kind of bug testing your own brain, and like, oh. kind of reorganizing the info you need and figuring out how to present it to yourself in a way that's useful and actionable, and so you're basically trying to write like a paper operating system where your brain is the processor. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. And it's good for, like, flaky, doodly people like myself because if you flake off for the whole month of 
December because you did a desert bus and you're tired, and then in January you just turn to the next open page and start start and up again. Start so, fresh. Cool. so he Heather can definitely talk it up as well. Heather and Corey um, is quite good. It's be good. Uh, bus, good bus. I just like the idea of giving myself an excuse to buy beautiful pens. Mm. Mm. So much, so, so much beautiful pens, dot grid, note paper. Like uh, it's yep. it's be good and post its post its of every shape and permutation. <laughs> ben will attest our, our shared, our home is covered in post-it notes, like thoroughly annotated. It's Anyone say littered, but... Is, it's not littered, Ben. There's a purpose to it. <laughs> there's a system. There's a system. Well, it's, I mean, it's post-its. It's not perfect system, but it's no, system. No, I mean, it's post-its, and then uh, uh, Molly tested uh, the kitchen cabinets, and they take, uh, is it chalk paint? It's chalk marker, yeah. Yeah, so all of the kitchen cabinets are annotated, so whenever anyone is home, they ask us, and then we point at the cabinet, and then they read what's on the cabinet. It's like go, that, oh, of course. It's like that gun scene from The Matrix, but with post-its when you walk into my house. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. It, it is. It's very accurate. Yeah. It's really easy to find stuff in your kitchen. It's great. It's so good. Yeah. And I, I can I can pretend that it's because I'm a good host and I want my guests to feel situated, but it's just because I forget where my stuff is. It's for, it's for me as well. Yeah. yeah. It helps. Yeah. It's useful. Excellent. Uh, I also have a, this is not really a question here. But uh, there's somebody in the comments, and I don't know whether this is correct or not, uh, wishing you a happy birthday. Is it possibly your birthday, Molly? It is my birthday tomorrow. Hey! 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 Happy birthday. Right now, hey. thank you. Happy birthday, happy Molly. Birthday. Oh, my goodness. Happy birthday. happy birthday, Molly. Yeah, and this is one of those rare years where uh, my birthday falls on Thanksgiving. They're the same day. Yep. Uh, and the first time that happened was the day I was born. Huh. Oh. So I... <laughs> I'm going to a bunch of people's Thanksgivings, my first day on this earth. So you're welcome, everybody. Nice so, job. So yeah. what, what you're saying is sequel confirmed, Thanksgiving versus Molly's birthday. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was, no, you know, that's, that is honestly why I have such a fondness for Thanksgiving and yeah. why, sorry, Desert Bus, I'll prioritize it over everything else, is yeah, sure. when I was a kid, my family, like all my cousins, lived real close to my grandma. And so once a month, we'd have little birthday gatherings, all the June birthdays, all the November birthdays. And then in addition to the November birthday gathering, there was a Thanksgiving gathering, and they would put my birthday in that little bucket. And so everybody else got uh, like, hey, you all shared this one cake, and everybody gets a couple presents. But I got a whole feast. Ooh. And so Ooh. for me, Thanksgiving was functionally like Christmas, but oh, I was the only one that got presents. And we still got to eat all this food and hang out with my grandma and cousins. And so I, I that maybe a little biased amazing. when it comes to my preference for Thanksgiving. I recognize that now. Excellent. <laughs> uh, let's see. I got a couple other questions in here. Uh, there was a question. I'm not sure if you want to uh, super go into this, but a, a lot of people are familiar with each of you individually. But the Jim Rabbit from the chat was curious as to how the two of you met. Oh. We met at i was trying to lean my head in so we oh. could do a cute thing um <laughs> we actually, did we yeah did we get we kind of <laughs> yeah is that right that's, oh. good. that's correct i got a beard rash on my face now um we actually we met at a a tweet up uh for uh the the comic artists uh, scott kurtz and chris strout perhaps you've heard of them yep um and i tell you what had not heard of them uh, but one of my friends from school super had and was we were going to a concert and she was like, hey, these guys, Scott and Chris, they're doing a tweet up. And I was like, I don't know what any of those words you just said meant, but I'm game, I guess, because you're my ride. And so I go to this tweet up with these perfectly nice sort of nerdy folk. I was like, I think these are my people, but I could not visually identify who Scott and Chris were. I just knew that a lot of nerdy folk liked them. And I was like, I'm sure. I'm sure I have to go home and watch Blamimations now, I guess. Yeah. And then there was this one one man who was not wearing a kilt and a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> he seemed to recognize my alienation and had this look on his face like, I know, this is kind of weird, I'm sorry. And so we traded information uh, and followed each other on Twitter and uh, became good buds and the rest is history. Aww. That's awesome. I, yeah. I don't think I've ever known this that story before. Yeah. yeah. So so Penny Arcade is bringing people together in all kinds of ways, turns out. Because they were in Penny Arcade at that point. What is a tweet were they not? I think, well, kind of. You know, well, I mean, you wouldn't know who Scott and Chris were on the site, and I, I, that was a step ahead of me at that point. 
Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I had I had m m met well. I had uh, I'd met them from the charity dinner. You met them at the charity dinner. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And so, and and I was actually, I think I was there before people. No, so child's play bringing people together. Yeah. So really, hey. child's play. Hey. Hey. Child's play is how I met them, and then that's how we met. Yeah. So, yeah. High five. Yay. Nice. Uh, is there? <laughs> Is, uh, I've been I've been reading a lot from the blog here, but is there anybody in the room who has a question for Ben or Ben or and or Molly? Surge down on the end there. I, I I've been asked not to use the performance mic, so okay. you might need to speak up a bit. Uh, ben, Can my you? sister's yes? wedding is on New Year's Eve. You've seen my suit. Should I get a new suit or just get it tailored? Uh, because you are. I'm trying more... to remember the last time I saw the suit on you surge um have you actually sent me a photo no uh, but I can. okay you you should but it when was the last time you actually wore that suit for a function the child's play charity dinner last year <laughs> oh gosh i should remember this i mean if it was really bad i i feel like i probably would have told you <laughs> I'm, I'm not great about keeping that in <laughs> You told um, me, no, sir, it, it that suit doesn't face. fit you very yeah, well. It's it, actually one of my favorite things is when ESPN or some sports TV is on oh, in a restaurant yes. and Ben sees how these suits are fitting these gigantic <laughs> sports dudes, yeah. and he just can't keep it off of his face. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if the suit was really some kind of suit violation, I mean, you would know. Or I watching mean, listen, there was a year that uh, Mikey basically threatened to leave the tags on his suit for the charity dinner, and I brought a seam ripper with me <laughs> in case he did. Yeah, because uh, I was not going to mess around with that. Um, I, yeah, honestly, Serge, I, I, I really need you to take a photo and just text it to me. Um, but, uh, but if you do need to get one, uh, the good news is there's actually a pretty good um, and reasonably priced um, Canadian retailer that makes uh, suits. I, I want to say they range from like around 200 US to 400 US. It's uh, like. Uh, Spire and McKay. I, maybe it's Spear and McKay. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. Um, I'm writing this down. I don't speak Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much use on the rest of this call because I'm just looking at suits now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, with you. Uh, I do have another question from the uh, from the blog here. Uh, hey Molly, what was the writing mm -hmm. process like for my American cousin? Was it easier or more difficult to write for a historical event and in multiple character points of view? All the best from Andy. Uh, oh, all the best from who? Andy. Oh, hi, Andy. Um, that song was actually kind of... It wasn't that hard to write because I had several failed pieces of songs that I just kind of stitched together into one song. And the challenge was to write a song with three separate musical movements like Bohemian Rhapsody or the like. Um, and I had just finished reading Assassination Vacation by Sarah Vowell, which I very much recommend if you are at all a nerd about history. Um, but uh, that song actually kind of grew from the center outward uh, from the booth. There's a, the second verse is about Don Wilkes Booth and kind of what was going through his head. And it, that was kind of the thing I found most compelling about the book was he, you know, thought he was... We kind of think of him as a villain because he's a villain. He kind of shot the president. Um, but he thought he was doing the right thing. And I was a freshman in college and had never considered, like, alternative historical perspectives. Um, and so the idea that, like, he and he felt betrayed. He was like, everyone was complaining about this president, and I did something, and now I'm the bad guy. And then he, you know, got shot in the barn. Um, but uh, as you I found that super, as one does, you know. Uh, well, especially after you assassinate a president. Especially yeah. in the Booth family, yeah. Um, but uh, the the Lincoln verse just kind of seemed like, what other verse could I end on, really? Um, and the first verse was actually, the first verse is not, like in the version of the song that everyone knows. It's just functionally, I knew, like, in order for this song to make sense, I need to set up that we're in Ford Theater and the president is here. And yes, it's the day you think it is. Um, but originally, that verse was going to be Seward who was also, there was an attempt on his life that day, and it just did not, there was like gonna, there was like banjo, it was like a whole bluegrass kind of thing, but then to switch from that to, I'm John Wilkes Booth and I'm mad about everything, I'm, I'm you know, emo, but in the 1800s, um, <laughs> I couldn't make, I couldn't make that, that sort of rail switch. And so you kind of have to, it was easy because it was writing three tiny songs instead of one big song, I just had to 
connect a single i had to kind of find a train of thought that could connect them all yeah and kind of you sort of consider some songs like sort of short films and you need to establish info the way you establish info in short films um and so it's i had mo- sarah val did most of the research for me so it wasn't that labor intensive on my part i just had to make it rhyme um you if that answers your book. question andy i don't know if it does I don't know how to answer questions about songwriting because I don't know how other people do it. It's a miracle to me that anybody else <laughs> writes songs on any timetable because I find it kind of difficult. Um, yeah. That's valid. Uh, yeah. What, you, what were you saying? Uh, I was say, it's not like you didn't do no work. You had to read the book. You had to know that the you book didn't. existed. You had to have a base level of historical knowledge. Like, sure. That's not nothing. Yeah. And it actually kind of put a real damper on my songwriting after that because... Uh, the song I had written right before that was this Mr. T song, and that was inspired yeah. by Mr. T's autobiography, which is called Mr. T by Mr. Th- Mr. T. <laughs> uh, the Man with the Gold is the subtitle. Uh, Love it. We have two copies now. Thanks, Logan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a heck of a read if you ever if you ever can get your hands on it. And so I read two books in a row for pleasure, not for school news, and then they both became songs. And I was like, I guess all the books I read in my downtime have to become songs now, which I'm just getting over now uh, in my 28th year. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't recommend reading books with the mindset of, this could be a song. I could make something creative out of this because then it'll squeeze all the joy out of reading. Yeah, that's, that's kind a, of like an anxiety. That's a reading tip from the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, is there are there any projects that you're working? Oh, do we have a question from the room here? Uh, I do actually. Um, Let's hear it. Molly, what was your actual involvement with Big Enough? I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you. It, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, now I look like an a hole. <laughs> so I thought you were making an incredible joke. No, I wasn't. So uh, there was this meme video. I was like, there's no way it's a different Molly Lewis. No, it's it is. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh, no. You know. There's a, yeah. no, there there's a there's a Molly Lewis who I think she's I don't know what the the title is for someone, but she's like a professional whistler. Yes. She like that is her her instrument, and she actually booked a show in L.A. recently, and I could not convince Songkick that it wasn't my show, and oh, so no. people that follow me kept getting emails about like Molly Lewis with some randos at Zebulon, and I kept getting emails like, hey, we need a photo of you from for the Zebulon show, and I would just link them to the Big Enough video. I was like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> well, because particularly in North me. America, it's, it's similar to the, the movie star thing, where, like, you can't have people of the same, like, sort of fame-based profession that have the same name, but uh, because this is a huge international thing, she's Australian, is she not? I believe so. Yeah, so the, you've, you've sort of run into the situation where there are, there are two Molly Lewis musicians. That was... Yeah. The one thing I thought I could avoid. Yeah, was that there was another <laughs> moment. Now yeah. I'm going to die of shame. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex, at least you didn't get basic math wrong in the Penn Gillette call. Yeah. <laughs> or color theory. <laughs> We've had a bad, everyone who's had Excellent. a bad track record with so, uh, I, I didn't even know how to whistle. Like, So hopefully she doesn't know how to play ukulele or we'll have to fight to oh, the yeah, death, no. I guess. Do a as, collab. Yeah, as long as you could do a collab. Uh, is there are there any projects that either of you are working on right now that you'd like to like to give a shout out to or mention uh, while we got you here? Uh, well, the thing I was working on today, actually, um, uh-huh. uh, to next next Monday, I suppose Cyber Monday, uh, my podcast Peanuts Gallery is releasing their annual revisit of a Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah, uh, I've been I, I host I co-host a uh, Peanuts rewatch podcast that I think Kathleen was talking about earlier uh, called Peanuts Gallery. Yep, uh, and Kathleen was by far our most informative guest, and <laughs> we ended up releasing two different versions of that uh, because we were like, do people want all of this extra Peanuts info on a Peanuts podcast? Who knows? Let's find out. And turns out, yes, people are into it. Oh. Um, Thank God. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, it actually, yeah, Kathleen, you kicked open some doors for us because we were like, oh my God, we don't have to edit these things that much. It turns out people <laughs> want to hear all the tangents. Thank God. So, um, so that, that goes up. I just sent that to the blandishment department and that goes up on Monday. Excellent. Um, and that's the current bee in my bonnet. Yeah. yeah, I think that's your, I don't remember what else. Do you have a, well, I don't, I, hold on. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> we just got muted. Secrets. We're at the end. Secrets. While they're, while they're 
sorry, just real quick here. While everybody's while they're doing that, the Peanuts Gallery, if you're interested, is available at peanutsgallery.simplecast.fm. You can go give a listen. Nice. That is true. My microphone's back on. Welcome oh. back. Um, hey, um, and we've also been. Um, we have some plans for early next year to start up some more streaming shows on Waffle Media, which Yay. is twitch.tv slash Waffle Media. We love Waffle um, Media. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I to figure out what our, I don't know. I, I, I don't remember what the, I, I don't know. <laughs> right? No, that's a hat. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to flash the wrong thing. Right. And get us in trouble. I, that's, I, a yeah. um, that's all I know. Sure. Anyway. But yeah. And some of that I think will relate to Bullet Journal, so. Yeah. I'll have to. I'll have to. The, the problem with um, doing bullet journal based content is one of the best things about the bullet journal system is it's very forgiving if you slack off of it for months at a time. But if you're doing a monthly stream based on what you did in bullet journal this month, like, unless we just set up that it's acceptable to go, well, this April I'm not doing bullet journal, sorry, and stream. Like, I don't want to do that. I mean, I think that's funny, but that's. <laughs> just like, I don't know. I'm, I don't I'm know. not really tuning in. I would I, probably be. Actually, I don't think people following our channel would be into that bitch. So yeah, much. no. I, Come to think of it, I think I would not be into that either because I would have to do the setup and tear down. Because uh, we don't <laughs> just have just for a thirty space. second stream yeah. to say, yeah, we didn't do nothing this month. Later, peace. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. Other than that, I I'm not sure. I have a thing I'm working on uh, with Mac. Hey Mac, if you're around. Hi. If you're not, well, I mean, some of you know Mac, uh, but. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about it until we start dropping anything. It's very uh, okay. secret. It's not that secret. I just don't want to say, hey, I'm doing this thing, and then it never happens. Um, but yeah. yeah, we have that, and I'm uh, rearranging my can, office. Can you say? To... Can you say of what medium? No. Oh, well, I guess it's a podcast. It's I'm a, pretty yeah. sure it's a podcast. It is a rewatch podcast. Yeah. That's Ooh. a Ray. Um, and it, stay tuned. No, that's. Uh, Anyway, yeah, yeah, and I'm cleaning up the office because uh, literally right before we came here, uh, we finally got our Glowforge. Oh, so, yes! Uh, yeah. Carving up a lot of things with lasers, which Excellent. probably means I'll be bringing some really, really weird stuff to Ian for Tinker Taylor in the yeah. future. <laughs> Glad to hear that. A big smile on Man, face. are you gonna laser a picture of a butt onto something? That's what I would do immediately. <laughs> that was the first thing I would draw was a butt. Okay, well, real quick, um, so uh, you can like I, I I don't have an exhaustive list, but you can uh, you can uh, cut and etch uh, plywood and acrylic. Um, you can some people have managed to etch metal with it because uh, it's not a super high powered laser. It's just targeted at more of a um, but you can uh, do kind of consumer market than uh, most laser cutters are. Um, but uh, you can like you can cut into Corian with it and all kinds Ooh. of stuff like that. But one of the things you can do is uh, a reverse etch on the back of acrylic, and then uh, use an edge lighter. Like they're on Amazon and they're like twelve bucks. And then you can basically make a little uh, custom acrylic award or display or anything else like that. So, yeah. Uh, I can certainly carve a butt into acrylic and illuminate that butt. Um, that's, that's the most romantic thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> do, do he got that illuminated booty? Oh, me too. He do. <laughs> uh, yeah, he do. Uh, do we got anything else from the? Uh, we got another question from the room here, maybe. Yeah, sure. All right, uh, Jordan down the end there. Hey, no, Ben. <laughs> Hey, Ben. Hey, Jeej. How did that sous vide bacon turn out? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, actually, uh, pretty well. I want to do it again with um, with a thicker cut, so I bought uh, slab bacon instead. Um, Thick. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so there's a, it's on um, uh, Serious Eats on that website. Um, but they do a lot of um, food science stuff, and some of it is... Not my jam, and some of it's really good. Um, but they have a recipe for sous vide bacon, which is kind of somewhere between, like a really uh, a really good um, pork belly, but you still have the crisp in it. And basically, mm -hmm. you uh, sous vide bacon in the package for like 12 hours or more, and then you take it out and just fry it on one side with a little bit of press to get your crisp side, and then kind of real quick brown the other one. But uh, the stuff I used was like center cut. Um, uh, I think it was like back bacon and it, 
it, it just like it, it was tasty, but it just kind of was a little bit more of a mess than I wanted. And so the the thing I went reading and the thing that uh, a lot of folks do when they try this is they'll either just buy slab bacon and have the butcher cut it into like half inch to inch thick slices Holy. or they'll do it themselves. Interesting. And so that's that's what I'm going to do next time. That's the most that's awesome. thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. I will definitely give you a heads up when that thing goes in the cooker and then we will plan because – uh, the last time I did it, I did that, and then I made um, drop biscuits, and then we mm-hmm. made really messy breakfast sandwiches. I really wish that it was possible. Like, ostensibly with the Glowforge, you can etch into food with it, but then you can't, as soon as you well, etch a non-food material, you can't, right. the laser's I mean, not safe so, anymore. So it's a laser cutter. I and... really wanted to buy, like, those slabs of beef jerky, like they have at gas stations, and then write letters on it, but... It, you still can. I have it's to do just, that immediately. It's just not necessarily safe for people to eat it because of the particulate that gets atomized. Maybe when I should only send laser-carved beef letters to my enemies then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll the, do it. the edible ransom just note. to get a second glow forge just for meats. Yeah. 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 The only thing it says is do that not is, eat. That is literally what is on their FAQ about it. Is, is if you it? want to cut food with it, we recommend you using a completely separate machine for it. It's like, uh, they're they're tremendously expensive. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. So we'll have to just wait for our non-edible Glowforge thing to show up do they, whenever that shows up. Do they up. come in different colors, or do you have to like have labeled signs like "This Glowforge for food only"? No, this is just a ploy from Big right. Glowforge. This is definitely a ploy from Big Glowforge. <laughs> Second Glowforge, but Glowforge. One in the kitchen, one in the workshop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You no. You you carve you carve a custom thing and put it around the button. So when you go to press the button that starts it, it says "Food only" around the button. Bam. That yeah. would be the thing to do. Yeah. Ham. Ham. <laughs> uh, do you have any questions for us, Ben and Molly, while we got you on the line? I feel like we've been we've been interrogating you a lot here. Yeah, turn those um, tables. Yeah. I mean, it. What's it like in the new moon base? Just having desert bus it's in there. It's so seems... good. Yeah. Seems like <laughs> this good is bus. the best okay. desert bus ever. Been... It's very good. Ben has uh, seen the new moon base, and I haven't. Right, and so it just seems it. like a TARDIS, you know? It just kind of this. Well, we were is... we were a little apprehensive because uh, engineering is in a separate room from us, uh, but mm-hmm. we have a live video feed. There's engineering in their own room. We have a live video feed right there, so that I can see engineering at all times. Hey, Johnny, what's up? Yeah, uh, like because when we were at, <laughs> if you remember, <laughs> what was that? No gang signs, Johnny. It's yeah. the ham sign. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you remember how d- engineering was like beside us, but like down in like a like that yeah. little, like pit area at Desert Bus Ten. Even though there's a physical wall between us, I can see engineering and communicate with them much better during this event than I yeah. have at like the last three, I think. Yeah, because I actually yeah. have yeah. like direct line of sight. Yeah, yeah, so, we, were, we were telling Johnny right before. Um, the call started that the, their little sort of the desktop, I guess what is your view to them, but that they cut yeah. to sometimes is just one of my favorite things just for comedy, like <laughs> that just that controlled so framing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, the, I mean, for the sort of space theme that was the intro this year, they genuinely seem like mission control, like oh, out yeah. in Houston, somewhere away from the moon. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, I'm into the new setup. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. It's... Also, another question. Why did you schedule it for American Thanksgiving so that we couldn't be there? <laughs> because we're stupid. We're stupid. I, I yeah. will throw myself under the bus for that one. And, oh, it's because Matt went to Disneyland! Oh, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> All because Matt Wait, went to Disneyland. That's why? That's I, part I asked that we do it oh. this weekend, like starting okay. the weekend we did, because I had the only way I could go to Disneyland and do the run that I wanted to do was if I did it that weekend and it would mean missing the start. And but you, I, you've been trying to do this run for years. I've been, trying to, do this, I've been trying to do this run for three years and I asked, like, a week after Desert Bus last year started, I was like, next year, we need to do it a week later. So, yes. there was plenty of warning. Fair, <laughs> Matt has literally worked his butt off yeah. and that, to do such a run. You should see his and, booty in that Hawkeye outfit. Seriously. <laughs> uh, oh, and, I and, like, that was not the only reason, but that's, that's just part of it. Uh, but uh, we are we are definitely hoping that you'll be able to come back and visit with us next year. Uh, because yeah, we mean, really missed like, the both of you. Uh, I mean, because I will choose Thanksgiving over any other thing. That's How just, many turkeys are here? There's there's three being cooked. I'm given to understand there are five turkeys in general. Um, <laughs> but, what? 
But I completely, right, you're gonna have to like, take Disneyland, us on a tour Disneyland of this, honestly this might be the only valid excuse. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I can let you off the hook for this one. Can yeah. I not to do be, Desert Bus next year and have five turkeys instead? <laughs> to be clear, this is not the first time Desert Bus has overlapped with Thanksgiving. Yeah, this is yeah. not the first and time. And the feedback that we've gotten is down the line as to whether it's from from viewers as to whether it's no, if it's Thanksgiving, that means I can't watch it and. Oh, thank goodness I have something to watch over Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, no. it, there's a very solid 50-50 like, yeah, divide yeah. there on our viewership. Yeah. Well, I think I think the secret is... No, actually, that wouldn't work. I was going to say, you just start in the middle of the week instead of on the weekend. Oh, or don't do that. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. No. Please don't do that. start on a Tuesday. Yeah. Well, we, we drifted back a day this time, because we started on Saturday previously, and this year we started on Friday. But we're... I was mm -hmm. cool with it. Yeah. All right, it excellent. all works. We'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll get you guys up here next year. We deeply absolutely. miss you. And, so but, much. But we understand that, you know, family traditions and yes. five turkeys are important, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, your, there's an extra to, ventricle. To, no, there's just a third ventricle, you should, I guess. You should probably see a cardiologist. <laughs> <laughs> little lamb ring yeah, yeah, Ventricle X and Y. Yeah. You should get that checked out. Yeah. But no, any any time we've been looking at the schedule and seeing your call coming up, or any time we've, been, we've noted the new hardware that we are running Desert Bus itself on this year, uh, we've been thinking of both of you all week. So... We're really hoping you're enjoying Thanksgiving, and uh, we're we really thank you very much for calling in. Is there anything else anybody wanted to say before we let them get back to their eight turkeys or whatever it was? We love you and we miss you, you so much. Yeah. When do we raid next? Send me a turkey. <laughs> I, I mean, I I don't know. Next reset when I get home. Yeah. I, Sunday night. Yeah. yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Send me your pocket Tuesday camp Tuesday codes. Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah. I've, I've got it installed. I just don't have time to play it until yeah. Desert Bus is over. Yeah. <laughs> It'll annihilate your battery. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like yeah. everything sure else on, <laughs> on my phone. Uh, awesome. Well, uh, thank you both again so much for calling in. If any of our viewers wanted to find you online, where would they find you? Um, HTTP colon forward slash. How many slashes? I don't know. It's two slashes. Two slashes. <laughs> waffle, waffle dot media, I think is I, I guess. our I joint ventures. Yeah. I'm Molly23 on Twitter. Yep. Yeah, I'm Dandy Geek on Twitter. I've also kind of taken a Twitter hiatus. Like, I, I check for mentions and things, but I just stop. Then that was not a good plug. You yeah. can also yeah. find us on Twitch.tv <laughs> and Waffle Media. Yeah. And we have subsidiary Twitches that we don't use. So go to Waffle Media first. Yeah, yeah that's generally the one we use. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Molly, I believe you're also on Patreon as uh, literally just Molly. Yeah. I Which, went to Patreon this month, and impressive. they were impressed. They were like, yeah. "Oh, you got that slash Molly," and I was like, yeah. I, "I guess, yeah." Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, there's more details about where you can find both of them online on our blog at desertbus.org. Uh, thank you both so much for calling in. You're excellent. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 We did it. We did it. We did it. Aww. All right. Well. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. We're all, we're, everybody's like, aww, because of course we miss Molly and Ben. Thank you guys much. so much, actually, for taking time out of your Thanksgiving. It sounds yep. like, sounds like. Sounds very full of turkeys. Well, I mean, like, Thanksgiving's a really big deal to a lot of people, and I, yeah. and, you know, yeah. I appreciate that Once somebody birthday, takes any time. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. The so ah. you, you can tell we really miss them because of how many people were like here for the call and then it's yeah, like, oh, and gone. we out. Bye. Now the rooms at, well, dinner arrived, You right? show the room. No one could be here. You no wouldn't one could know. be here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, for the people in the room, I think we already got everybody in the room, but I